This right here is one of the most famous bagel shops in all of New York City, Cosair's, right here in the beautiful Lower East Side. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist, and today we're going to venture right in the heart of the city in order to learn about bagels. I'm super excited to show you some bagels behind the scenes, how they're made, what machines that they use to make them, and then actually try some bagels. But we're joined by a very special guest. Let's go inside. Right here, Cosair's on Grand Street. So we are joined by Sam Silverman. Sam, you are a beagle connoisseur, a beagle expert, a beagle tour guide. That is correct. And also a bagel event host too. Yes, yeah. the founder of Bagel Fest, New York's first and only bagel festival. That's amazing. How, so how long have you been really into bagels? It's been over five years, well my whole life, yeah. okay. but professionally for five years. Okay, very cool. And then what is Bagel Fest? Bagel Fest is um, a huge event where we get bagel vendors from, the best bagel vendors from New York and uh, all over the world actually, who come together at one place in time to sample their signature offerings mm. for thousands of attendees. And you also do bagel tours, which is really cool. I run bagel tours all throughout New York. So I bring people to the best shops and again, we sample the signature offerings and I show them a side of New York's best food that they may not otherwise see. And I went to the Bagel Festival. It was actually really awesome. I really loved it. Uh, you get to sample a whole different host of different bagels and also coffee because coffee goes well with bagels. Need coffee with bagels. So let me just pull, point the camera over here. So this is a very typical bagel shop right over here. This is. Yeah. And yeah. this is Cosair's. What's very special about Cosair's? So Cosair's Bagels and Bialis is one of the oldest bagel bakeries yeah. in the entire country. They've been around since 1936, and they are, in fact, the oldest Bialy bakery in the country. Um, so they make all the bagels and rolled kettle balls fresh on site, and uh, they're absolutely one of the best in New York City. So point out the Bialis, which ones are they? The Bialis are on the left there. So the right Bialis are the okay. cousin of the bagel. Okay. They are also a traditionally Jewish pastry, but they don't have a full hole. They just have an indent in the middle and they're not boiled before they're baked. Oh, that's a little bit more about the history there. And then of course, all the bagels here. We've got all the classic bagels right there. And then uh, usually you also have like black and white cookies. You usually have yep. sometimes And we've got pastries. some Halloween cookies now, <laughs> right. you know, right. just in right. time. <laughs> and of course the cream, tree, cream cheese spread. Right yes, here. this yeah. is an essential part of the bagel experience right. is having some cream cheese and smoked fish. That's amazing. All right, let's go behind cool. the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Good. You can see here one of my favorite things about Kosars is that they have the history, you know, bagels first made their way into America in the late 20th, uh, late 19th century. Okay. And, um, you know, from Eastern European immigrants, and they really settled in the Lower East Side. This was the, the Jewish quarters of New York City, and this is where 30 different bagel bakeries all sprung up, uh, including Kosars. And so I love that Kosars kind of pays tribute to their heritage and has pictures back from the 1930s up on the wall. Um, which, you know, connects what they're doing here today with where they came from. So yeah, the people we're seeing here, early 1900s, were one of the first like bagel customers in New York City. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's amazing. All right, well wow. now, yeah, let's go. go behind the scenes here. Oh, I'm so excited. And if you can't tell that Sam is really into bagels, yeah. he has an amazing bagel shirt. <laughs> very, <laughs> very into bagels. So upstairs here, so Kosar's is also one of the largest uh, bagel bakeries in the city. You know, space is at a premium in New York, right. but they have a lot that they're working with. So upstairs right here, this is the Bialy factory. Mm. This is a Bialy machine. This is a dedicated Bialy oven. It's huge. The bagels aren't yeah. even made up here. And yeah, it takes up a lot of space. A lot of shops just have one oven dedicated wow. to both bagels and Bialy's, but Kosar's has two separate ones. So they're done with the Bialy bake for the day, so we're not gonna see them making that. We'll see what's happening downstairs. All right, let's check it out. Uh, Bella says, cool shirt. Nicole says, Sam's shirt is cool. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Thank you, it's a one of a kind thing. <laughs> do you have also bagel socks? I do not have, do I, okay. I, I have them, but not on right, right now. Okay, okay. Come downstairs, excuse mm. us, excuse hey, us. Hey, how's it going? Smells good. Hey. Yeah, they're making Ooh, some hey. bacon right now. Oh, wow. So That's this is so where good. the magic happens. Of course, a bacon, egg, and cheese is a must. Uh, absolutely essential. One of the classic New York. So you can see the bagels coming out of the... So, so let's talk, what is a bagel, right? 
A bagel is five ingredients. Mm. It's water, flour, yeast, malt, and salt. And the key thing that differentiates a bagel from other breads is boiled before it's baked. Oh, interesting. So and the boiling so is what gives the bagel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This I'm is Sharon, going. this is a GM. I'm Ariel. nice to meet you. Same here, same here. I'm so excited to show how the bagels are boiled. Okay, yeah. and he's taking you through the yeah. magic of the yes. bagels, Sharon. right? So Sharon is amazing. Oh. She, she, she runs this incredible shop. Oh. She does a fantastic job. Oh, Huge team you. that she has to manage. Oh, yeah. And yeah. still puts amazing product out there. Oh, thank you for that. So. Appreciate that. And, and how, long have you been, how long have you been running I've the place? I've been running here about maybe five years now. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Yeah. And it's been a joy ever since. Uh, really, really. Uh, first bagel shop you ran, or did you no, actually, the bagel I, industry I'm, before? I've been doing bagel shops for like about 20 years, 21 oh, wow, cool. years. Yeah, so it's a lot of a lot of experience that comes with this. Oh, nice, a bagel veteran. I love uh, it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. So he's gonna take you through all the magic of baking bagels. Perfect. Exactly. Okay, I'm very exactly. excited. Thank Enjoy. you again. Thank you, Sharon, for letting us uh, come behind the scenes here and, and say see. Say hello to Sharon when uh, you come and have uh, bagels here. Because I really do love close ours. Just ask for me. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> just ask for Sharon. Sharon. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so as we were saying, bagels, they are kettle boiled before they are baked. Oh, and that is what gives the characteristic crunchy exterior, soft, doughy interior. Because mm. it gelatinizes. The flour mm -hmm. on the outside, it, it, it forces the gluten molecules to bind together, and so it traps the moisture inside of the crust. And that's that contrast is what makes the bagel so special right. relative to other breads. It's that shell and that doughiness in the middle. Exactly. Yeah, oh, that, that is exactly. what makes the bagel very interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, and that dates back to religious reasons as well, or exactly. cultural reasons. That is exactly yeah. right. So why did bagels come about? Breads with holes in the middle have existed for millennia. You know, it's a very practical thing because you can put it on a string, right. you can put it on a dowel, it makes it easy to transport. But in 16th century Poland, Jews were forbidden from baking bread. So how did they get around this? They boiled their bed, bread before they baked it, and that was the loophole that allowed them to bake bread. Oh no. That is the origin of the bagel. So they couldn't bake this first, they had to boil it. They had oh, to boil okay. it before oh. they could bake it. Did That's that exactly change the right. way they would make the dough? Um, yes, yeah, so, so bagel dough is different from other types of dough. Okay. The main difference is that it uses a high gluten flour. Um, again, gluten, the, the high amount of gluten is what seals the outside of the bagel and traps the moisture inside. Mm. So if you're making bagels at home, you definitely have to get a high gluten flour. You can't use just normal bread flour right. or else it's not gonna turn out very well. So yeah, they had to develop it, their own sort of techniques and recipes. Um, one thing about high gluten flour is that it's very, um, it's, uh, it, it results in a very uh, dense dough. And so because of that, it has to be hand rolled. If you machine roll it, it's gonna gum up the machine and it's gonna break the machine. And for that reason, you know, bagel rolling machines didn't come around until much, much later than a lot of other automated, mechanized ways of baking bread. And there was uh, brothers that made the machine here in the U.S.? There was an inventor, Daniel Thompson, okay, who made it in the 1950s, and he sold the tech. This guy was an inventor. He also invented the foldable ping pong table. Right. So he's, uh, you know, just a tinkerer. And he leased it out to Murray, um, uh, Murray Lender, Lenders, Lenders Bagels. Yeah up in New Haven, Connecticut, who realized that he could pre-slice, freeze, and ship bagels all over the country and make a fortune doing so. Oh, uh, that's why. And that's why all of America has bagels. That's exactly yeah. right, yeah, Murray Lender. And uh, that's amazing. Are we gonna actually see, see these boiled? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. When, are yes. these gonna get so boiled and baked? Are, these are gonna be boiled and baked. We're okay. waiting on the water. So an important uh, part of baking, as he told you, is, is yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. So the important part of baking bagels, as he told you, hot water. Right. It's got to be boiling, and we want to make sure that it's done right for you. Uh, the oven is nice and hot and set, and I'll have some come and work with him just so you get that authentic oh, baking cool. experience. Okay. okay. It, it, okay. Is the, does the water actually make a difference? The water is yeah. a critical part of this oh, whole experience. Okay. Not only for the boiling, but yeah. when you're putting it in the oven, the board's got to be damp. It's a, the steam from the boards being uh, baked while it's there. It's a whole thing. It's mm. a whole thing. 
and my guy knows wow. it. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. That's exactly right. And then Thomas asked, uh, what's the real story of the hole in the bagel? The hole is, again, for very practical reasons. Okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> nice. it's so that they could transport it. Yeah. They used to, back in Poland, uh, bagel peddlers would take a dowel and they would put bagels on the dowel and they would walk through the streets with the bagels on their shoulders, hawking bagels to people. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so that's, you know, that's how it was done. Let's go around back Let's here go, and see yeah. if we can see. Let's so to make these bagels. And uh, clip it on because don't worry, it's going to be a oh. little bit too loud if you yeah. sure. hold it up. Sorry. No worries. Um, wow. So you can see here, this is all the flour that they go through, right? Um, and like Sharon was talking about, the water is a key component of it. So it's not in use right now, but they'll take bags of these flour. They'll mix it with water, mm. salt, malt, and yeast in these giant mixers. And that's how they create these huge things of dough, um, which a bagel roller will then come and slice up and hand roll into those beautiful bagels mm. that we saw over there. Um, because uh, making the dough from scratch will also be very time intensive, right? They do make the dough from scratch. I mean, uh, yeah. like actually hand making the dough. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be no, With the time. volume of bagels that they're doing here, there's no way. Right. If you're doing it at home, sure. But well, why is, it, why is it rolled by hand then? Well, well, what, because why dough, does that make a difference? The dough is too tough okay. to be rolled in a machine. Ah, I see. And okay. so uh, hand rolling is a very important technique to bagel. Mm. You know, back in when bagels first made it over to the United States in the early 1900s, there was actually a bagel baker's union. There were about 300 bagel rollers and bakers who were the only ones in the city who were allowed to bake bagels. If you tried to bake bagels outside of that, they'd come throw bricks through your shop's window, break your legs, real <laughs> mafia style stuff. But um, it is a very coveted breaking position. Breaking bagel. Yes, breaking bagels, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but it was a very, you know, it was a well-paying position. The union had a lot of power. Yeah. They would go on strike and New York City would go through bagel famines. Um, and so they would negotiate against the bakery owners and, you know, they had a lot of leverage until the bagel rolling machine came along in the 1950s and 1960s, which eventually undercut their power. Now, uh, a machine rolled bagel is not the same as a hand rolled bagel. Let's get close. It's softer. Yeah. It's got, um, it's, it's much closer to bread mm. and it's too perfect. One of the beautiful things about bagels is that they're, each one is unique, like a snowflake. It's got its own imperfections in it, and it's not, it doesn't have an exactly circular, perfect hole in the middle or shape to it as a machine-baked bagel does. Right. You don't want it too perfect. That, that's yeah. part of the charm of eating a good bagel. Exactly. Yeah. So this is, oh, yep, wow. this is the, uh, the mixer here. After they, they roll and bake the bagels, you'll have seen that Sharon took the bagels outside of the fridge. Now, this is another key component. Can we walk in? Yeah, yeah, we can walk oh, in Oh, I here. love walking just, into fridges. Let's just <laughs> close, close that things. behind you. Yes. Um, this is another... Oh, go ahead. Uh, so cool. <laughs> right. The bagel making process is letting... Mm. ...for hours. A lot of shops outside texture or the sweet taste and allowing it to slowly ferment in let's, the refrigerator for back 24 outside hours. It's not too much it's, it's good too service cold. here. Yes. Oh, okay. So hopefully we're still live because uh, that is a huge metal fridge. So hopefully you heard a little bit. We'll repeat a little bit more. Okay. Uh, and there's even a over here, right? There is, yeah. There is a nice. Yeah, so uh, slightly true. repeat what you said uh, back there. Yeah, I was just saying that um, fermenting cold fermenting the bagels in the fridge for 24 hours is a key part of the process. It allows the dough to slowly rise while building flavor. Mm. And a lot of shops outside of New York try to shortcut that. They only let the dough ferment and proof for one to two hours, but doing it for a full 24 hours is a key part of the process. So the bagels that we saw in there, mm. those are getting ready for tomorrow. Those oh. aren't even gonna be baked today, or unless they were rolled you know, yesterday. And, Right. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll get a very kind of soggy, not not so good texture bagel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, it's it'll, it'll be a lot flatter, and it won't have that same puffiness and, and you know, fluffiness to it. Right. And yeah. then this gigantic machine over here. This is the key. This is the bagel oven. Wow. Um, you can't make bagels without a bagel oven. Gets super hot, 500 to 600 degrees, 
depending yes. on you can feel it over here yeah you can feel the, the weather heat. and um, the humidity plays a key role mm. the bakers here are very experienced it's very much an art it's not you can't come in and do the same thing every single day because okay. the dough is a living breathing thing and it reacts to the environment so mm. you very much have to take into account how hot or cold is it what's the humidity and that plays into what temperature you bake the bagels at and, and all that stuff as well and DS is asking, what's your thoughts on toasting a bagel? Never toast a fresh bagel. Right. That's a great question. Right. Especially in a place like this. When yeah. it's coming fresh out the oven, it... it and they do multiple bakes. So they do multiple bakes yeah. throughout the day. That's okay. right. So you're always getting a fresh bagel. Okay. Now, why do you not toast a fresh bagel? Well, the beautiful thing about a bagel is the contrast, the crunchy exterior and the soft interior. Mm. If you slice and you bake and you toast a bagel, it's going to make the whole thing crunchy and the same texture right which is fine you know if you like what you like if you like that great you like that i'm never going to tell someone not to but it kind of it it brings down the it, it evens the playing field it makes a great bagel okay and it makes a bad bagel okay if you're at a right. shop and you're getting a fresh bagel never toast it if you're at home absolutely toast it now a little tip for how to toast a bagel at home Ooh. Don't slice it and then put it in the toaster. Rinse it under water and then put it in an oven or a toaster oven at about 350 mm. degrees for 10 minutes. And that will rehydrate that crust while keeping and warm the inside while keeping the inside soft and the outside crunchy. Oh, fascinating. Okay. Yeah. That's a great pro tip. So if you're buying bagel in middle of America, don't have access to a bagel shop, do that. Yeah. That's how you do that. Yeah. Uh, what's this loud noise that we hear? So we do, there's huge vents. A lot of people have never been inside the kitchen. Of course, we got the gigantic sink. Yep, we got yeah, the sinks here. The We've got the bagel staging yeah. here. These are fresh out the oven. They need to cool off before they go upstairs. I'm going to take a whiff. The Can they take a whiff? Absolutely. I'm yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, hmm. right? Especially everything bagel. Has yeah, such the a everything bagel, bagel seasoning is, is definitely the most popular, and those are some pumpernickel everythings. Um, one really cool thing about Kosar's is yeah. that they have a bagel staging station for their Gold Belly business. I don't know oh. if your viewers know anything about Gold Belly, but it's an online specialty food platform where you can order regionally specialized foods from anywhere in the country. So you can get bagels and pizza from New York, you can get cheesesteaks from Philadelphia, you can get barbecue from Kansas City, and it gets shipped to you directly overnight. Um, and so you, you know, if you are watching in the Midwest or West Coast or wherever in the country, you can actually get Kosars shipped directly to your door next day. That's amazing. So we can oh. go and kind of see, go Let's through see. their secret passageway here. Wow, so yeah, check it out. Uh, Gold was uh, Table 87. And in Chicago, there's a few of them that do that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a very popular thing. It was especially helpful over the COVID pandemic, you wow. know, when business, walk-in business wasn't as good. But you can see here that uh, they're preparing. Thank you. We'll, we'll, be two we'll just be in here for yeah, All right, a sorry. second. All right, we're back. Yeah. What were we saying? Um, I was saying you can see here that there's bagels and bialis getting staged and ready to ship on Gold Belly. Oh, wow. Hey, how's it going? Uh -huh. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's nice staging. Oh, okay. So they actually take photos currently. Yeah. Um, uh, as oh, they're, they're just preparing about, them to yeah. go into these boxes to get, uh, to get, or not these ones, but over there to get shipped out to people all across the country. Thank you again. So yeah. very cool. Kosars has, which allows them to do a lot Huge. of really great things. And, uh, this connects with various buildings, or is this just Kosar? Yeah, this this is a whole strip right here of um, restaurants that are all kind of connected underground as well. The water is boiling. So, nice. Yeah, the water is getting there. It's it's getting up there. Ooh, very cool. All right, we're I think we're about to see some bagels being boiled. Yeah, Let's hopefully. See. Hopefully, cross your fingers. Let's so hope we'll, that water we'll gets very hot. Uh, Ask any questions as we're waiting for any water, to, uh, the water to boil. Uh, did you have anything else to show us down here? Um, nothing else to okay. show, no. Uh, so ask uh, Sam any questions about bagels. A few people already asked. Uh, let us know your bagel questions. 
Uh, walking coolers don't like cell phones. No, they don't. Uh, I love that tip for uh, Toasty Bagel says M4D uh, DZAN. Yes. And Katya says, I heard about that service. Yeah. And DS says, does New York City water specifically have anything to do with how good bagels are as with pizza? Uh, yes. Yes, it yeah. does. So the, the water in New York is very soft. The mineral, mineral content in water plays a role into how the dough turns out. Mm. Um, and so water can be soft. It can be hard. And New York City water actually comes from upstate in the Catskills and it travels through a series of pipes that makes its way to New York City. And along the way, some minerals from the pipes get, you know, infused into the water, um, which gives it the perfect sort of consistency to be mixed with flour. And that's what makes New York bagels and New York pizza so great. Uh, and then uh, Juliana asks, do they have any other locations outside of New York City? Kosar's does not. They have two other locations within New York City. And they're just recently open, right? The one on Hudson Yards is okay. recently open, and the one on the Upper East Side is opening soon. It's not even opened yet. Okay, okay. But this is a very old business that was recently acquired by new ownership, and they are starting to expand it across the city. Oh, very cool. That's amazing. And Felix says, please post the website, website link. Yes, you can already check the link of Sam's work, bagelfest.com. Yes, It's in the description. Please. What's the most popular flavor, says Susu, and usually in the bagel shop? Everything so. bagel is by far the most popular in So New we'll York. show you here. So you can see the everything seasoning. And what is everything bagel? So oh, no. Everything seasoning is typically sesame, poppy, garlic, onion, and salt, all mm. mixed into you know, one mixture that gets applied to the bagel. So it's the best of all worlds. Okay. Every shop has their own proprietary mix and some add, you know, other special ingredients to it. We're getting ready. Um, yeah. But, uh, bacon. you're baking soon? Yeah. Baking soon, okay, perfect. Yeah. Perfect, love it. Oh, love so it. excited. Awesome. Now, outside of New yeah. York, Grubhub released some data about, you know, ordering data, bagels ordered through Grubhub, and the most popular flavor in the entire country Blueberry bagels. That's so weird. Very weird. Yeah. Not a New York thing at all, but it's very popular in grocery stores and I don't know, in, in the Paneras and Brugers of the world. Um, blueberry bagels didn't exist until Murray Lender tried to sell bagels to the American public. He knew that to get them to buy into it, he had to make them mm. sweet. So he put fruit in them. He put, you know, he made blueberry bagels. He made cinnamon raisin bagels. And those were, you know, newish inventions in the 1960s. Everything bagel seasoning didn't come along until the 1980s, and it's unclear who invented it. There are seven different people who claim that they invented it okay. all around the same time, but none of them has proof that they were the one. So it's an apocryphal thing, you know, where did the everything seasoning come from? And then the most recent bagel innovation has been the rainbow bagel, which they don't even bake here because they only do the classic stuff. Yeah. But if you've been on Instagram, you've ever seen a bagel, odds are you've seen a rainbow bagel, which yes. is basically a plain bagel with food coloring infused into it, sometimes a little bit of sweetener. And it's very fun for kids and you know tourists who are coming to visit the city. Someone asked about uh, pumpkin bagels. Here Ooh. we go. All, All right. right, so let's, let's look at that. As you can see here, he's taken a rack of bagels that has been proofing for 24 hours, Ooh. and he kettle boils them. That's amazing. This is the key part of the process. This is what gives bagels the crunchy exterior. You cannot skip this. A lot of shops, again, outside of New York City, they tried to shortcut the step by steam baking their bagels, which essentially means they're gonna they're gonna try to do this process as they bake it. Oh, never okay. turns out the same. Steam baking? Oh, that seems like really cutting corners. It is, yeah. but it's a lot cheaper. Let's do everything. Everything, yeah. So these will, these will boil for yeah, anywhere for from 30 seconds to 3 minutes, depending on you know, the shop's different techniques. They all have a different... Well, it's pretty quick. It's similar to pizza right behind you. Yep. Sorry. Similar to pizza, very quick. Yep. Uh, baking yeah, process. Yeah, exactly. And then here you can see he's laying out these burlap covered boards. Oh, interesting. The burlap is a really essential part because um, it allows the bagel to not stick to the, the floor of the oven. Oh, yes. The bagels will be placed on here. Which is uh, the mistake a lot of people do when baking at home, including myself. Yes, yeah, exactly. So you gotta get the, the, bo the boards wet and prepared for these uh, bagels here. Wow.
Now you can see they're floating on top, which means they're pretty much ready to be taken out, mm. to be seasoned. You can see he's grabbing a giant thing of everything seasoned. Oh my god. Here. That's not the one from Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. And now he takes them out of the kettle. That's gorgeous. So ladies and gentlemen, bagels be made right here, right in front of our eyes. The baking process. Classic New York City Ooh. bagels. So now he's gonna season oh, them. Nice. <laughs> yes. Go yeah, for it. this is perfect. Perfect. Oh, Look very at generous. Look yeah. at that. A generous seasoning is yeah. a key part to a great bagel. A lot of shops will try to skimp. They'll only do one side of seasoning. Yes. Because it's expensive. You know, this adds up. When you're doing thousands and thousands of bagels a day, saving on, uh, on one side of seasoning can, you know, can add up. But the great shops here, mm. they always season both sides of the bagel. No, I want all the garlic and all the poppy seed. So he's a pro at doing this. He's uh, got a great technique. I'm assuming pumpernickel would be a different uh, dough that they would exactly, use. Exactly, okay. yeah. Most of, the, most of the bagels use the same dough. They're, they do do a whole wheat mm. bagel, which uses a different flour, and a pumpernickel bagel, which uses a different flour as well. But those are all baked separately. And then for the other toppings, do they also have a huge vat where they uh, oh, dip, yeah. it, dip it in? Right, okay. right up there. There's like oats and... There's onion, there's salt, there's poppy. You can probably get up there. But you really only want to make one, one flavor of bagel at a time. Ah, I see. That's why. Okay. Let us know what's your favorite bagel flavoring in the comments. Susie likes everything or plain. I like poppy or everything. Oh my god. The burning furnace. Right here. So now he's got to stop it at the exact right spot. And get these bagels. Does the wood uh, give any taste or um, No, the wood, the wood doesn't impact the taste or okay. the flavor. So it's not like the same wood that's used for barbecuing? No. No, okay. No, because this doesn't actually burn. Okay. What's the capacity for bagels here? Let's see. They can fit probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't know, they could fit maybe 15, 16 boards yeah. at a time, six bagels, so that's about 90 to 100 bagels, and they have... Oh, oh the bacon, oh, wonderful. Wow, look at that. Yeah, so good. Oh, it's Key making, for the bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah, making me in the mood for one of them. Bacon, egg, and cheese, everyone's one single word, not multiple words. Bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. That's <laughs> the classic New York order. Right, right. right. Oh my god, I think we're going to show a big egg and cheese uh, for the taste test. Look at that, wow. Oh! Mm. It smells mm. absolutely amazing in here between the bacon and bagels. This is heaven. Yeah, you get that nice toasty smell. Yeah. That, um, bagels, of course, have that smell, but it's even stronger in here because they're in the middle of baking. Love pumpkin spice this time. So someone asked about pumpkin bagels. Yes. Is it a thing? Uh, pumpkin bagels, not so much. Okay. Not pumpkin flavored, at least. Mm. There's definitely pumpkin flavored cream cheese. There is one shop down in New Jersey, the Bagel Nook. Mm. If you go on their Instagram, you can see that they do make bagels that look like a pumpkin. Okay. Very, very cute. <laughs> They're bright fluorescent orange with a little green stem in the middle. Taste like plain bagels, but they look like pumpkin. Those are a lot of fun. Um, but pumpkin flavored bagels, not so much. Right, bagels is not a food product that gets so uh, caught up in the hype trends that happen. It does a little bit. With you uh, know, the rainbow. The rainbow bagel yeah. is definitely a, a, a trendy sort of thing. And I always like to say, 
The bagel is a canvas. You can do truly okay. whatever you want with it because there's so many different flavors of the bagels, of the cream cheese, of the toppings you can put on it. Mm. Bacon, lox, sausage, veggies, eggs, whatever you want. There's millions and millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of combinations. No, we're. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we good. Thank you again Thank for showing you. us. Yeah, Thank I you. appreciate it. Uh, should we do a bagel tasting? Yeah, yeah, we'll be good because it's gonna take. Oh, you give, you'll flip it. Okay. Oh, you're gonna do a flip. Okay, let's show. So the, the, flip. the flip is a key part of the process. The bagels yeah. will bake for about ten minutes. Flipped halfway through so that both sides get baked evenly. Okay. Should we show it? Yeah, yeah, it, it's fun to see the to see the flip. Okay, all right, let's do it. This everything. This is everything, yeah. Everything, yeah. This is great, a lot, yeah, wow. Beautiful. Can you do that one more time? Oh, amazing. <laughs> Worth its weight in gold. Right. Perfect. All right, we'll do the flip here. Oh, nice. One more bacon rack. Is actual fire down there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, nice. Is this a key part? Is you flip it over. Oh, okay. Boom. So quick, you can even. Look at that, boom. Perfect, um, Perfect technique. technique, yeah. Exactly. This guy knows what he's doing. That's why there were bagel unions, as you mentioned. Exactly, yeah. it takes skill. It's it's not something that uh, you can just walk into and and do easily. Danette and Anthony, New Yorkers, say it's very difficult to pass by a bagel shop. Yeah. Ten minutes, five minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Already, okay. Everything. Everything. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Nice. All right. So yeah, Perfect. they'll bake for another. Thank you so much for ten minutes. Over there. And uh, and then they'll be good. Wow, that's so cool. All right. So we'll back upstairs. We've oh, seen how sorry. bagels are made. Yeah. Now we're gonna go eat some bagels. All right. Let's do it. And uh, a few people are already asking, what's your favorite combination? We'll talk about that upstairs. Oh sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dia says that the people working here really enjoy what they do. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, you know the one thing about bagel shops, very early mornings. The yeah. bakers get in here at three a.m. Mm -hmm. to start baking because they open up at six. So it's a really tough mm -hmm. business, but um, feeding people, you know, is great, especially with such a comfort food like the bagel. Right. It's a it's a food that unites people that brings everyone together that's why i wanted to throw bagel fest you know it, it really is an opportunity for an entire community of people to come and get together and celebrate over something that is not you know it is controversial in the fit sense that we can each have our own favorite flavors and combinations right. and shops and debate that until we're blue in the face but at the end of the day we're all just breaking bread i like i like the way you put that yeah, yeah. that's amazing yeah so what are the typical options for a bagel sandwich? Of course, they already have the classic options, but yeah, what the three classics for bagels in New yeah. York City? Yeah, so the three classics are just going to be a bagel with cream cheese or butter. Okay. That's just plain, right? Um, and then I would say a bagel with cream cheese and smoked fish is absolutely a classic. Um, and we can talk about a little bit while we're eating, like the reasons for that. Mm. And uh, then the third one is a cheese or bacon sausage or sorry uh, uh, sausage, sausage, sausage egg and cheese um, but smoked fish is a really important part of the bagel culture and history mm. um, let's just think here should we get we should get a bacon egg and cheese do you want any fish stuff as well let's try the bacon egg and cheese and let's try the classic uh, fish the, the lox and the, cream cheese the lox okay yeah, yeah we'll get the we'll get the nova I think um, I think that's a good thing to show yeah uh, They'll um, get, uh, everyone will get the idea of what also a cream cheese bagel looks like. Yes, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but the reason for that is the same, the reason is an important part of bagel culture. Yeah. The same time that Jews were coming over from Eastern Europe and bringing bagels with them, 
Scandinavian immigrants were coming over and bringing the technique of curing and smoking fish with them. They were. And it was very popular because it was a, um, one, it didn't require refrigeration, which was really expensive back then, so it was very affordable. And it was easy to kosher, which for those who don't know, kosher is um, like dietary practices that are common with religious Jews, right. where you can't mix um, dairy and meat. Uh, you have to, the, the only foods that you can eat have to be blessed by a rabbi, etc. So it was a lot easier to get kosher smoked fish than it was to get other types of meats. And so that is why it became such a common and popular thing. Now, the thing with lox back in the day, that smoked fish, was it was super, super salty. Um, like, um, no, that's pastrami. So we don't see lox here yet. Well, th okay. these are like different variations of lox. Okay. Most shops okay. don't actually even sell classic lox anymore because it's so crazy. Right. What we see now is something called Nova, which is a variation that is kind of in between um, smoked and salted. So it's not quite as salty. When you order lox at a bagel shop, you're really getting Nova. Right. But back then, lox, super, super salty, they had to cut it with something to make it more palatable. And that's how cream cheese entered the equation. So they would take bagels, they would put cream cheese, and then they would put lox on top. And that became a very traditional, um, very traditional offering. All right. So I'll let you do the order. Yep. We're going to capture a real New Yorker doing a real <laughs> yeah. bagel order. And my personal favorite is an everything bagel with scallion cream cheese. Oh, yeah. That is the litmus test that I get at every shop. Um, to you know, I feel like if they can do a good one of those, it bodes well. If they can't, the shop's in trouble. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Yeah. If you want to learn more about that, watch my videos with Mike Varley of Highly Varley. He goes really in depth into detail as oh, yeah. to why um, scallion cream cheese is very important. Uh, Dory says, I can't do raw fish. Technically, it's not raw, it's smoked. So there is a, like a cooking process in essence. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like uh, raw salmon at a sushi place. Correct, yeah. That might be a fun video for you to go behind the scenes at a, uh, at a smoked fish factory. I might hit up uh, Acme Fish. Yeah. Yeah, because I think uh, they're, they're pretty good. That's a, it's a really cool process. And there's other traditional types of, uh, okay, so these are all cream cheeses here. We'll they have the like salad. white fish salad and This is a vegan and cream cheese as well, tofu cream cheese. Oh yeah. yeah. Almost every bagel shop in New York City now offers vegan offerings for, you know, because it's, it's a very popular thing. So there's a lot of tofu cream cheeses out there. Right. Um, why a bagel shop would be an appetizing shop and a place to grab meat, a pastrami sandwich would be a deli. Correct. Yeah. Very uh, good. You did it. your homework. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I've, I've covered the history a few times, especially back in, uh, when I started doing live videos. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a lot of history involved with that. But yeah. um, are they still functionally separately uh, in um, most places or are they starting to meld? There are absolutely dedicated appetizing shops. Yeah. Russ and Daughters. Barney Greengrass, Zabar, Shelskis, those B are all... BH Dairy as well in uh, St. Mark's Place. Yes, yes. They are... Oh, well, they're... They're they, more of a, like, deli, sort of. I love yeah. that spot. Right. I, was, I used to live a block away. Best place ever. Yeah. Favorite place in New York. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, but now a lot of shops will, will mix and do, you know, the appetizing offerings with the deli offerings as well. Mm -hmm. But it used to be important to keep them separate. I mean, people kept kosher. You can see we've got some smoked fish. Wow. Fresh good. smoked fish coming out. Is it still taken from the Long Island Sound? 
Um, no, yeah. this fish is sourced from all over the world. Yeah. Um, and, you know, very few people know this, but most of the locks in the city is manufactured by just a couple of smoked fish suppliers, including Acme. Wow. Um, you know, some of it is white labeled and, you know, the, the shop's brand is put on it, but most of it is coming from the same place. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot to smoke fish yourself. It would be very cumbersome to do that. Joseph says sable, yum. Sable is another good. Sable is another type of smoked fish, yeah. Christina says uh, this is an awesome establishment. Yeah. I really, I've been coming here for quite a while because also next door is my favorite donut shop. So. Oh, really? What shop? It's a donut plant. Oh, I didn't know that they were right next door to here. Yeah, yeah. That's the original one. Oh, uh, no way. Donuts and bagels. Yeah, go for it. Hey, good thanks. Can we get a bacon, egg, and cheese everything bagel? And like a classic Nova sandwich on an everything bagel? Not toasted. It's cool to hear that they, they give the option for the blasphemous people who choose to do so. They do. Well, they've been strong-armed <laughs> by the public. Oh, yeah, because there's yeah. a few shops that are still resistant. There are a couple shops that held out for a long time, but every shop now offers toasting. Yeah. Even Murray's? Even Murray's. Oh, wow. Even Murray's, okay. yeah. And, you know, a big part of the reason why they don't want to toast is not just for the integrity of the yeah. bagel, but also for the economics of it. It takes about 45 seconds a minute to go through a toaster, okay. and when you're going through hundreds and hundreds of people on a busy weekend morning, those minutes add up the right. amount of people that you can serve. So a lot of shop owners were resistant, not only because it ruins the integrity, but it also slows down the business. <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, look at this beautiful slice of, slice of smoked fish right there. We've got these fresh everything bagels coming out. You can see there's so many different varieties. Like, and this is just a few of the possibilities, overall possibilities. You know, some shops offer 20, even up to 30 different flavors. Kosar's just offers the classics. Sometimes it's a bit overwhelming once you start crossing 10. It can, it can. Between that and all the cream cheese options and is there a way to superficially tell what's a good bagel shop and what's not a good bagel shop if you don't know anything about bagels? Um, I think you want to look for a bagel oven and a, a bagel kettle. Mm. Um, you know, making sure that you're right. uh, We had the uh, big egg and cheese on the bagel. And uh, which one? It's a classic Nova sandwich. Nova sandwich. Hey. Also, uh, I'll have a small cold brew. Sorry. Thank uh, you. Small Americano. No, no, no. Chill. Yeah, yeah, we've had cold, yeah. I insist. Oh, uh, hot, hot. Yeah. Oh, he was, he's been filming it. Oh, you did? Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We, we showed all the fish, yeah. Thank you. Oh, cool. Thank you so much. Right. Okay, we got, we got the classic Nova right here. All right, so, so final five minutes, we're going to try some bagels. This is a big that reveal. Is a, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's gorgeous, yeah. That's amazing. So that is uh, lox. Tomato. Uh, tomato, wow. Onion, cream cheese. Capers and cream cheese. Yeah. Capers right. really, really makes it, in my opinion. They're little yeah. salt bombs. They're little they. salt bombs, yeah. <laughs> Close up. Now let's get the... Uh... Thank you so much. And here, the other, the next classic. This will be a nice reveal. Oh my god. My favorite sandwich. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Wow. Look at the steam coming off of that. that fresh bagel, fresh bacon, fresh eggs, 
this is going to be... <laughs> I've got a bagel tour to run after this, so yeah. I have to eat a lot more bagels, but... <laughs> so um, we'll just uh, sample a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, like, uh, want to dig in and do the, do the whole thing now. Let me grab my Americano beer, but... Yeah. All right. All right, let's try it out. All right, what, which one do you want to try first? Let's try the, uh, the hot one. The first. hot so, yeah, one, okay. Two. All right, get in here. Otherwise, otherwise it'll go, go cold. Though a bacon egg and cheese still tastes really good cold, in my opinion. All right, right there. Cheers. Look at that. Yeah, All right, let's try it out. Here we go. Wow. Now this is a phenomenal bacon, egg, and cheese. Koshars gets all the little details right. And that's the key differentiator is the amount of hair energy that goes into crisping the bacon Thank just right. Melting the cheese to perfection and making sure the eggs aren't overcooked. There's a lot that goes into this. A lot. Oatmeal or bagel? It is not so hard of a choice. All right, one more bite. One more bite. So it's really good, really soft. But as you mentioned, it has that great crispy shell, mm -hmm. and the inside is very doughy. Mm -hmm. Those are good eggs that they use. Mm -hmm. They're not pre-making those eggs into a shape, which is indicative of like a Dunkin' Donuts or many other big brands. Some shops microwave their eggs. Oh, oh. never. You need a fresh grill. If you're looking for the key, look for the equipment. Mm. The equipment is what will show you, you know, how a shop is doing it well. Great bacon. Oh. Just gonna grab a napkin right mm -hmm. here. Amazing bacon. Well, super crispy. Just really well done and very juicy. I mean, they're they're baking it in the bagel oven, which yes. is, gets up to 600 degrees. That's so fine. it's a lot easier to make a nice crispy bacon commercially than it is at home. And um, and what type of cheese? I think this is American cheese. Yep. Typical American cheese. Yeah. That's that's a classic beginning. Beautiful cheese. melt on it. You can at certain places, especially the ones that have a bigger spread of cheeses and meats, you can ask for uh, cheddar cheese. But usually American cheese is the classic. It has also that very nice creamy texture to it. So let's uh, move on to the to the lox. The Nova. Yeah. yeah. Nova. Lox, lox sandwich. Beautiful. Ooh, wow, look how big and thick this is. Oh my god. You can gosh. see the juice is running down. Oh my gosh. I kind of want to get a picture of us. Go for it, yeah. While we're... Oh, actually, I to take a thumbnail shot as well. <laughs> can you do a wide shot? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let's, do, let's do one. All right. All right, we just took the thumbnail. Um, that's amazing. We're gonna take a bite of this, and then uh, for like two minutes, ask Sam any questions. Wow. Mm. Oh, I think they gave us the everything infused cream cheese as well. So we got double everything here. Um, Very garlicky. Yeah. In a good way. I love the smoked fish. It's just, in my opinion, smoked fish combined with cream cheese is a great combination. Because um, cream cheese alone, in my opinion, I'm not the biggest fan because it's like almost too much dairy. But I love the the juicy, smoky fish. They complement each other very well. And then also, don't skip out on the actual vegetables that they usually add. The capers, the tomatoes, and the onions just add an extra great quality to it. Hundred percent. So this is a this is a very classic uh, sandwich. Yep. How long has this one been around? It's only been since the 1920s and 30s. One thing we didn't talk about was cream cheese, another American invention. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've covered this before, but oh. briefly though. Let's yeah. see if any of your viewers know where was Philadelphia cream cheese invented. Give them give them a minute to answer that. We're about to inflate the ego yeah. of our state. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was invented in the 1870s by a dairy farmer who accidentally knocked 
a bucket of cream into the cheese that he was making and it came out super spreadable. So bagels came over around the same time. Yeah. Box came over around the same time and cream cheese was invented at the same time. So the marriage of those only happened in like the 1920s. So this, this has been around, this sandwich has been around for a hundred years. Back in Poland, they didn't eat bagels as a sandwich. They would dunk it in water or in schmaltz, which is chicken fat, okay. and uh, rip and dip it, you know? It, it wasn't eaten like a sandwich. So this is a very uniquely American creation. It is, yeah, especially all these combination of ingredients. And of course the sandwich, which uh, goes hand in hand with the classic American burger too. Yep, yeah. yep, 100%. Uh, that's amazing. So. Uh, so let us know who you think uh, invented. Uh, I, Eileen says France. You would think France. They were trying to go for a brie, uh, brie cheese, uh, but they end up doing something different. A schmear. Yes, you can definitely use a schmear. Someone said New York. New yeah, York. Danette. Yeah. Danette and Anthony, you got it right. Was it Chester, New York? Chester, New yeah, York. Chester, you New knew York. it. Yeah. How'd you know that? Well, I did cover the history before. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, but the interesting thing is um, that fascinating me was that they were trying to imitate French cheese as well. Neufchâtel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but and they, they called it Philadelphia it, because at the time it was the dairy capital of the world. Oh, it was. Okay. So it was just purely marketing. So rapid fire questions, ask anything to Sam before he has to run over to his tour. Check out his tours, bagelfest.com. Uh, what's the cross streets of this amazing bagel shop? We're on Grand and Essex. Grand and in Essex. In the Lower East Side. In the Lower East Side, right by also the Tenement Museum. You can go to Donut Plant right next door for great donuts and dessert. There's a lot of great stuff to go around here. Also Chinatown's nearby as well. How does the malt affect the bagel? It sweetens it. It gives it a, um, you know, that, that sweeter kind of, it's more flavorful than mm. typical bread. Katrina says, just need a coffee with that now. Yep, that's why I grabbed the <laughs> Americano. Uh, what is the biggest, best bagel in New York City? So I really love this place, but what's another recommendation you would get? Uh, Essa Bagel. Essa if you're bagel. visiting New York, go to Essa Bagel. You can't go wrong. Okay. And then one Brooklyn recommendation. Brooklyn Shelskis. Oh yeah, I love them. They have great uh, whitefish salad. They do. Ooh, it's, a, it's a great, it's an appetizing shop that yeah. make their own bagels and they are phenomenal. Yeah, really good. Check them out. They're in Cobble Hill, right? Yep. Cobble Hill, yeah. Uh, do they ever make rye bagels? Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, some of the shops, it's not one of the most popular flavors, but... And George asked, what's the most popular bagel shop? But what, uh, what's the most famous one? There's one mentioned in Seifelt various times. Um, Absolute, or H&H. H&H. H &H, H &H, yeah. H bagels is a very famous one. Absolute bagels is a famous one. I was just there yesterday. And then the oldest one. The oldest one... I think it might be Kosar's. Continuously the oldest, running. Oldest operating yeah. one. Yeah, continuously running one. Yeah, yeah, probably there's not that many. Uh, Difference between that. NYC and Montreal Bagel. That's a great question. So, Montreal Bagels don't use salt, they use honey instead. And the bagels are boiled in honey water and then they're baked in wood fired ovens. So, they don't use those rotational ovens that we saw right. downstairs. Um, Fairmont and St. Vieter are the two main bagel shops in Montreal. They're very good but they're very different from this. It's a lot smaller, denser, sweeter. I have to eat three Montreal bagels to fill up, whereas one New York bagel does the trick for me. Plus Montreal bagels are no sandwiches. They don't do them very well as sandwiches because they have those huge holes, and yeah, they just hand them to you in a bag and you have to rip and dip. And what's the difference with the Samit? From, uh, the the, um, the Samit is also yeah, like, it. has like a huge hole in it. Um, yeah. It's like a similar process, and it's also, you know, evolved from, um, the same ancestors that the bagel came from, but uh, but they don't use the same dough. They don't you know hand roll it in the same shape and right. Yeah, but they're still so, they're very good. Definitely come to a place like this. Uh, where can people find more of your tours? So many bagels bakeries still use malt. Yes, they do. Or yeah. do they swap it with vinegar? I assume. Sugar. Sugar. Okay. No, malt. Yeah. I had a terrible time to take a bite. Yeah. If you want to go on a bagel tour with me, you can go to nycbageltours.com. Also follow me on Instagram at Brooklyn Bagel Blog. And, um, and then on TikTok and, as well. And on TikTok oh, yeah. at Brooklyn Bagel Blog. I'm constantly showing content behind the scenes at bagel shops. Um, you can get some merch. I've got Bagel Fest merch. I'm about to start carrying some merch from some of the shops too. I just picked up some hats from Absolute Bagels just oh. yesterday. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so, 
check it out. I'd love to show you behind the scenes and eat some delicious bagels and show you what the best bagels in New York are all about. Yes, do check it out, especially if you want to get an uh, inside look into a classic New York City dish. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. And then I always wave goodbye if you want to join me around over here. Sure. Bye, everyone. Muzzle